All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ventures Podcast. I'm excited about today's episode. I'm going to go ahead and talk about this new service called Galileo AI uh, as we continue our Web 2 and 3 product code series. Uh, and then in a little bit, I'm going to talk a little about CSS and write through and walk through some code a little bit. But first, uh, this is a screencast. So if you're listening to this episode, you can visit the link in the, in the show notes to watch the screencast. And if you're watching, you can always switch over to, to um, the podcast at any point. You can just search for ventures in your podcast player and it, it should show up. So, OK, I came across Galilee AI. Uh, and in the screencast here, you can see the quick demo. You, you, you type in a prompt and it will generate in Figma a, a, a UI design so that you can just dream up a, a set of prompts for an application and get a, uh, a, a design. Now, I'm on the waiting list to go check this out. Um, so hit me up if any of you are on this and uh, have, have tried it thus far. But really, we're going to get to a place, I think quite quickly, where these types of applications are going to be available and we're going to have at least at least a, a first go, a rough draft at designs that are going to jump into Figma here. And as I showed, you know, I I'm not, I, I am no visual designer, well, graphic designer whatsoever. But uh, you know, anybody can jump into Figma and just start moving things around and change fonts. And you know, I used this uh, a few episodes ago when I was walking through, uh, you know, how Ruby on Rails works. Um, but you can generate lines and little things and uh, boxes and 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 whatnot, and so I think we're going to quickly get to not only a, a you know kind of like a co-pilot for interface design, but we're going to be able to then translate this code this from Figma to code, so that you're going to basically copy and paste what you generate in here into your into your code files, and you're going to be off and running. So look for this. Check out. I'll put a link in the show notes to use Galileo.ai. Um, but I think we're going to see a lot soon, so maybe you can get into the uh, wait list yourself. And uh, I think we're going to see a lot more of this. This is going to be pretty exciting. So product, you know, product people listening in on this, uh, you're going to you're going to want to pay attention. All right. So switching gears over to code. So last week we did a bunch of these uh, heading H1, H2, A3, different paragraph tags, and I linked over to W3 Schools so that you can learn more. I'm going to go ahead and just pull up W3 Schools again because, again, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. If you look down the left side here, they have a ton of tutorials that you can follow to learn more about it. Um, and, and I do think it is quite valuable. I'm going to have to do this myself because I've never been quite amazing at CSS. Uh, I do think it's important to go through this uh, so that even if the, our AI overlords are generating our HTML and CSS and JavaScript for us, although JavaScript will probably come later, but if they're generating our CSS and JavaScript, our CSS and HTML for us, we're still going to need to go in and tweak it. We're going to need people who know what they're doing to, to make sure it looks amazing on mobile widths and tablet widths and desktop widths. Um, so, but... Uh, yeah, you're going to have to jump in and learn this. So what, what I'm going to basically do here is, is just continue on our, our example from before. This is an example of, of CSS. Um, I'm going to just pull the template. You can just pull this style tag into your code, and I'm just going to, in our index.html, the ERB file, I'm going to take this, copy, paste it in. We'll delete this, this stuff here, and we'll just copy in exactly what they have. And... Uh, and see what the difference is in our um, in our example file. So typically, you'll, you're going to want to right paste it in. You're going to want to index this a little bit. Uh, and I pressed Command and the sort of close bracket key in order to to index that together like that. That's very common, very common thing to do when you're writing code is to in, index things a bunch like that. So then, and then we can go into our our interface here, and you'll see instead of what it was, right? If I, if I go back, if I delete this real quick and I refresh, this is what it was before. And if I add that stuff back in, it changed the background. It, it, it centered these tags. It changed it to, to white. I don't know why you would do light teal background on white text, but yeah, maybe occasionally you would do that. And, um, and you can basically now see if I wanted to change it from light blue, I could just change it to blue. And refresh, and it would be darker here. Ooh, it's kind of a harsh blue. 
But you, you get the idea. You can change a bunch of the tags. I'm not going to go through it and reinvent the wheel here. You can go through this whole tutorial yourself, which I would highly recommend, and then start playing around with creating elements and changing the visual look of those elements. Uh, and, and that's really the beginning of, of a lot of uh, sending you in the direction of being able to create these uh, more complex web applications yourself. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, as always, you can get a hold of me. Just my email is will at wclittle.com. Happy to answer any questions and uh, have a great rest of your week. All right, a couple quick things before you go. Number one, I have a general newsletter where I write about technology and startups and health science and teaching people to code. And I write about a variety of different subjects that we talk about on this show. So if you go to wclittle.com, there you'll be able to subscribe. And you'll also be able to subscribe to particular topics. If you're just interested in one or a few of them, you'll be notified right when I publish new content in those areas. Number two, my partners and I at Proto Ventures have a portfolio company called Startup Rocket. If you go to startuprocket.com, there you'll be able to receive coaching guides and customize an operations framework for you and your team and your advisors to be on the same page in terms of what is the appropriate next step for you and your entrepreneurial journey. And finally, if you wouldn't mind leaving a review anywhere that you have listened to this podcast or watched this podcast, it'd be super helpful to help those who might be interested in consuming this content as well. Thank you.